I'm going to tie a fun little streamer fly. This is the spruce. I'm not certain how old this fly is. I think it's been around for many years. I do know it's a very good fly for brown trout as well as rainbows. I'm certain in smaller sizes, even brook trout would love this. Um, had some good success on warm water species with this fly. Just a very, very handsome fly with the peacock sword and the, the hurl body and the red and the badger hackle. It's a great bait fish imitation. Great fly for just casting out and just swinging with the current, not even putting any effort into it all. Just let the current more or less provide all the action for it. But it's a fun, also a fun fly to tie. So that is the spruce and I will get started tying. start the spruce fly by placing my hook in the vise. This is a Mustad R75 size 6. The earlier nomenclature was a 79.580. It is a 5x long streamer hook. You could use something shorter, R74, maybe an R73 if you want. Most of the ones I've tied usually are a little bit longer. I like the longer profile of um, the 5X long hook. I'll debarb the hook. I'm going to attach my thread. I'm going to begin with a Danville 6 aught in white. And I'm using that because there is a red floss portion to the body, and I don't want to darken that up. I'm going to attach my thread behind the eye of the hook. Not exactly behind the eye of the hook, but a little bit down, and I'm going to run a base layer of thread along the hook shank. You don't have to do this. You could attach your thread right down the end of the hook shank if you want to. I think that it does help in terms of that base layer of thread gives a little bit better uh, grip, I would say, to the rest of the, the body of the fly when you're tying it in. The tail is made out of peacock sword. I have about six different peacock swords here, little barbs I'm going to tie in. Again, this is a size six hook. It's a little bit on the large size. So I want to have this be a little bit fuller. I'm going to tie those in so they're about half a shank length long. I'm going to wrap those in, still working my way down the hook shank a little bit. I'm going to trim these to about halfway up the hook shank. There is a wire, a wire rib, I should say. The rib is wire, and I'm using a, for this one, this is a Laggerton's in uh, gold. It's a size small. I'm going to attach that to the hook and have it about the same length as the rest of that peacock sword. It'll be inside the body, and that's fine. Still working my way down the hook shank just a little bit here. I'll tie in the first portion of the body. The body is made of peacock curl as well as some red floss. I'm using a Danville four-strand rayon in red. You can tie the body. I've seen... A lot of flies tied where the red portion is about halfway up the hook shank, especially if you're tying on a smaller, say a 4X long or 3X long streamer hook in a smaller size. But most of the recipes that I've run across in terms of the spruce talk about the red portions about a third of the, sh the hook shank length and the peacock curl is going to be about two thirds. Now, I, I think you're kind of splitting hairs if you're going to be that concerned about the portions. I only point that out, I suppose, if you're going to tie some of these up to frame and you want them to look that way, then get a bit persnickety. But 
this is a fishing fly, I'm not going to be that persnickety about it, especially, like I said, if I'm tying these on even this hook, let's say a smaller size, 10s or 12s, I'm probably just going to go 50-50 on the length for the red floss as well as the peacock curl. And wrap that floss in, secure it. I'll trim the excess about the same length as the peacock curls there, or excuse me, the sword and the wire. Got a few fuzzies here. That is mostly due to rough hands. This rayon floss, if you've got some dry skin and rough hands, uh, that rayon floss doesn't like that too much. It gets kind of frayed, let's put it that way. And again, if this is a fishing fly, I don't know that you, I'd be that persnickety, but now, again, I'm not going to wrap the rib in just yet because I have the peacock curl body and I'll wrap the rib over the floss as well as the peacock curl body so that the peacock curl is also protected. I'm going to use some strung peacock curl for this. You could use just the hurls off of the large feather if you have it. I like the strung simply because this is a good use for it. The only downside to the strong hurl is they tend to be a little bit thinner. Is that the right word? Not as dense. The the barbules on them aren't long and full. And that's just because of the way they're packaged and they're they're all rubbing up against each other and everything else. I'm going to get these tips fairly even. I have about five or six hurls here. I'm going to tie these in. I'm going to trim away the excess on the tips. They're a little bit too fragile and they pop real easy. I'm going to tie this in, working my thread still up the hook shank. Get a little bit of wax on my thread. I'm just simply collecting all of those excess uh, materials down along the hook shank and I'm going to stop a good eye length behind the eye of the hook here. And I'm going to apply that hurl. You could do a couple of different things with this if you wanted to. To reinforce that you could put all that hurl into a dubbing loop and then wrap it in. The issue is more on this large of a hook. It's kind of tough to get a real full body on on this with the peacock curl and in a dubbing loop it tends to kind of squish it together a little bit more so i'm going to wrap these in and you'll notice i'm kind of wrapping over the previous wraps this is going to help in getting me a little bit fuller body where i tie that in And I lost one. That happens. You could unwrap all of that if you wanted to. What I might do is just wrap this in a little bit wider so that I can wrap it in. But if it's not, if the body's not full enough for you, like I said, when that broke, I could unwrap everything and just wrap in some more peacock curl. I'm going to take my rib and I'm going to wrap this in the opposite direction that I wrapped in the peacock curl and the floss. Mostly because the floss would be fine, it'd be nice and protected. But this way, when I wrap this in 
on the peacock hurl, it's counter wrapped from what the hurl was wrapped in. This is going to help protect it a little bit more. Now, no fly is indestructible, but you can help them to last a little bit longer, especially with any toothy critters that you're going to fish for. And I'll twist away the rest of that. Now I'm going to attach my black thread. I'm using a Danville 6 aught in black to finish the fly off. I'm a little bit close up behind the eye of the hook. But I can remedy that by just wrapping down a little bit on top of that hurl. That actually will help because the wing, I don't want the wing when I tie that in right in front of that hurl. If it gets jammed up against that hurl, sometimes it'll cock up at a 45 degree angle or something like that. By wrapping back a little bit here and smoothing this area off, I'll actually keep that from happening. Now, the wing is made from a badger hackle. I'm using a Whiting's American Rooster. This is a silver badger. The one thing you want to do when you're Tying this in, selecting your feathers, because you're going to get two feathers and they're going to be concave. You can tie these in in a couple of ways. You can tie them in so that they're concave together so that they flare out. I put them basically the two concave sides next to each other so that it, it tends to uh, flatten out more than, um, than flare out. And, and just because that's the way these are going to swim in the water when you're when you're fishing them, the only thing you want to be careful of that I try to take a little bit of extra care when selecting these is some of the badger hackles will be kind of narrow and skinny down the center, and some are going to be a little bit thicker. Now you want the tips and the profiles of the feathers to more or less match up. As you can see with these two feathers, they do. The, the roundness of the tips and the width of the, the feathers, they tend to match up. The difference is that the one now facing you, the black portion is skinnier than the feather on my side. As far as a fishing fly goes, I don't think that that's going to be that big of a deal. I think it'll fish just fine. So if you're using these feathers and that's what you have, then I suppose that's what you have. But again, if you're wanting to just put a little extra attention into tying these, then that's something to watch out for. These two feathers that I have here have nice, even tips. And you'll notice that the black portion in the center, the portion that makes up what is called the badger uh, hackle here, they're about the same, so they look very similar. I'm going to peel away some of the uh, barbs off the rachis here, exposing that a little bit, and then trim away the excess. Now what I can do is look to get the right length for my wing. If I tie that in right there, the tip of that is, is too far back. I want the tip to be just a little bit past the tail, not even maybe a quarter of the shank past the tail. So I see my tie-in spot and I'll peel away these barbs to get down to that tie-in spot. And I'll double check it. If you're uncertain, just peel a little bit away at a time. That way you don't peel away too much. And that is the link that I'm looking for. I will trim away the excess. And then I can tie this in right on top of the hook shank in front of that hurl. Now, as you can see, it kind of got cocked a little bit there as I tied that in. So just unwrap it. If needed, what I'll do is I'll regrip that 
do a pinch wrap. See if I can get that down in there a little bit better. One thing you can do, sometimes you have to do this two or three times. You can leave these longer, so they give you a little bit of a handle to move that around out here. The other thing is a trick with a lot of the feather wing streamers is to apply a little bit of rubber cement inside here and then basically glue those together prior to tying those in. That way they tend to act as one and they tend to behave a little bit better for you. There we go. So now I have them pretty much right straight up on top, straight back. And I will secure those in and smooth this area off for my collar. Collar is the same badger hackle. I'm going to select a feather down here near about the middle of the feather is where I'm going to end up the end of that collar. And I want those barbs to go about back to the point of the hook. Holding this by the tip, I'm going to stroke those barbs in a rearward direction and then trim the tip so that I have a little anchor to tie that in. Securing that in, I'm going to leave my thread right here at the end of the peacock curl. The reason for that is as I am wrapping this in, that thread and the weight of the bobbin will push in a rearward direction, and it helps to get each wrap kind of jammed up against the previous one. Hold those barbs back if you can. And we're going to wrap that in, working our way up to the eye of the hook. Probably going to get somewhere in the neighborhood of five or six wraps in here. You can have a sparser collar if you want, or even a fuller one. It's up to you. During that in, I, you'll notice I'm pretty much right behind the eye of the hook. I'm going to stroke all of that back, the rest of that feather, and all of those barbs. Now, working my way from right behind the eye of the hook rearward. to build the head of the fly. Doesn't have to be large, you just want it to taper on down. This also has the advantage of getting all of those barbs kind of pointing in a rearward direction. The rest of this, I can pop right off. more wraps backwards and I'm ready for whip finish. Flatten my thread out. Hmm. Seem to have one or two barbs still going forward. Or at least getting trapped under that thread. So a couple wraps to get those secured. Still getting some in there. Okay. 
So I'll put a four or five turn whip finish in. That will finish the head. You know, take your time with this. You have some barbs still kind of pointing out in the odd direction. Just take your time with it. And again, if it's a fishing fly that you're tying, I really wouldn't even get that fussy with it because as this is going through the water, all of this is going to get swept back. That wing is going to be down like this and fluttering around. A little head cement, both sides of the head there, and our spruce streamer is done. So it's a fun little fly to tie. It's a very handsome fly. Uh, the reds and the greens in this work very well. And the, the peacock sword and hurl is such a fantastic material to tie and fish with. I can attest to bait fish patterns like this do work very, very well for trout. And they do pretty darn good for warm water species as well. So that's the spruce streamer. Thanks for watching today. Thanks for joining me at Device today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, Remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.